Okay, unit five is the continuation of uh, what you have covered last week, which is the nucleophilic substitution reaction. So between that uh, reaction and also the uh, dehydrohalogenation of alkyl halide, it is uh, very well uh, connected. Okay. So another name for this reaction of the hydrohalogenation of alkyl halides is also known as uh, elimination reaction. So the outcome for this unit, uh, you should be able to explain uh, the elimination reaction and their types, okay, and then uh, we will see the mechanism and also the stereochemistry that involve for both of the mechanism. We have two, which is E1 and E2 mechanism. Okay, uh, the mechanism will be something similar to what we have encountered in nucleophilic substitution reaction. You have SN1 and SN2. So here in elimination reaction, you all you will be having uh, two type of mechanism as well, which is E1 and E2. Then uh, lastly, uh, or before that, uh, what kind of factors that influence them, meaning uh, uh, the uh, types of uh, nucleophile or base use, the uh, alkyl stereochemistry uh, of the starting material itself or the substrates will uh, influence whether it follows E1 or E2 mechanism. And lastly, uh, we are going to discuss the Setzef and Hoffman elimination products. Uh, so basically, the products that will be obtained at the end of the elimination reaction is normally an alkene, but there will be two types of alkene form. One is called as the Setzef. Okay, and the other one is known as a Hoffman product. So what is uh, the elimination reaction? So last week you have seen that basically in elimination reaction, we are trying to uh, eliminate uh, atoms or group of atoms okay, from the carbon itself. So here it is stated that substitution reactions are rarely exclusive, meaning that uh, the reactions uh, of substitution does not happen on its own. There could be another reaction involved, which is uh, elimination. So elimination reactions can compete okay, with the substitution reaction or uh, it may be uh, favored as well. And then uh, the uh, elimination reactions are those which involve the removal of atoms or group of atoms from two adjacent carbon atoms in the substrate molecule to form a multiple bond or in this case a double bond. So what does it mean is that atoms of or groups of atoms from two adjacent carbon is here we have an example you have C, C over here so adjacent is side by side Okay, you are going to eliminate these atoms or group of atoms from side-by-side -side carbon in order for the carbon to form a multiple bond. So in this reaction, two sigma bond, which is this, okay, uh, what we also call a single bond, uh, will be lost or will be broken and a new pi bond, which is this double bond, will be formed. So saturated compounds become unsaturated. So this one is considered saturated, doesn't have any double bond, but this is saturated because it contains a double bond. So elimination reactions form alkenes as well as alkyne. That means if you have your starting material is an alkene, meaning that uh, no double bonds ever, it will form alkene. But if the starting material is an alkene like this, then it will end up with uh, alkyne. So alkyne is triple bond, okay, triple bond, C, triple bond C. So elimination reactions are basically a reverse reaction for addition reaction. So addition will be covered in unit six. 
So there are two types of uh, elimination reactions. Okay, one is called as the alpha elimination or one one elimination. Okay, alpha elimination and one one elimination. While we have another one which is called beta elimination or one two elimination. So why? Uh, what make it uh, different one one and one two? In one one elimination both of the atoms or group of atom, let's say you have Y and Z over here, comes from the same carbon. Meaning you have C and then the Y is not situated here. It is positioned at this same carbon. You have Y and Z from the same carbon are being removed or being eliminated. But for beta elimination, one, two elimination, uh, it comes from two different carbon. Okay, the atom or group of atom that you are going to eliminate basically comes from two different carbon. You have carbon one and carbon two. So one, two elimination. Okay, so <clears throat> alpha elimination, a reaction in which both the groups of atoms are removed from the same carbon. So example over here, so product of the reaction is halocarbin or dihalocarbins, which are key intermediates in a wide variety of chemical and photochemical reactions. So example, you have this CHX3. X stands for halogen. Let's say you have CHCl3. So uh, the uh, atoms that are going to be removed from this same carbon, the elimination happen on the same carbon since there are, there is only one carbon available. So hydrogen will be removed and one of the halogen as well. So uh, this is an example of alpha elimination. Well, for beta elimination or one to elimination reactions. So basically the group of atom or that particular atoms are removed from different carbon, which are uh, adjacent, okay, side by side example. You have uh, the, uh, here you have the L, which is the uh, living group, okay? So one of it will be from this carbon and the other one from this carbon. So you have alpha carbon and beta carbon. So alpha carbon is basically the carbon that is attached to the functional group itself. Okay, let's say you have a halogen group Okay, that carbon that is attached to the halogen group is considered to be alpha carbon. Okay, in fact, any carbon that is attached to the uh, functional group like hydroxy or carboxylic acid or even if you have ether or carbonyl group, that is considered as the alpha carbon. Okay, the carbon next to it, so any carbon that is next to it, is considered beta, okay? But this is not beta. This is already uh, further away. It must be the uh, neighbors, okay? The neighboring carbon will be labeled as beta. So in this particular reaction or the dehydrohalogenation of alkyl halide or elimination of alkyl halide, the elimination occurs uh, via the 1-2 elimination or the uh, beta elimination. Okay, uh, the elimination reaction usually require forcing conditions. Okay, in other words, it must involve heat. Okay, which is uh, the uh, form of energy, and also a strong base. Okay, a strong base. Base. Uh, this strong base is also. Uh, the nucleophile in the reaction. Example, you have these substrates over here. Okay, you have your bromine, your halogen. This is the alkyl part. So this is an alkyl halide. So ethanol, this is ethanol, is the solvent, while this potassium hydroxide, KOH, is the nucleophile, which is also a very strong base. Okay, all uh, base Okay, base can be considered as a nucleophile, but not all nucleophiles are basic. Okay, there are nucleophiles which are neutral. 
Okay, they are not a base. So here, uh, the product obtained is an alkene plus the leaving group, which is one of the hydrogen and also a bromine, Br. So there are two mechanisms in which that the uh, elimination of alkyl halides undergoes. One is the E1 reaction mechanism and the other one is E2 reaction mechanism. So for uh, E2 mechanism, so it stands for bimolecular elimination reaction. If you still remember in SN2, it is bimolecular substitution reaction. Okay, this is because the rate of the reaction depends on the concentration of both substrates and the nucleophile. So the, the reaction is considered to be second order reaction. So if you add the concentration of the substrates or the nucleophile, the rate of the reaction will increase, okay? make the reaction go faster. So the rate determining step involves the participation of both substrates and nucleophile. Well, for E1 mechanisms, so E1 stands for unimolecular elimination reactions. So the rate of the reaction only depends on the concentration of substrates. So this uh, reaction basically involves two steps. So the rate determining step involves the participation of the substrates only. So in E1 mechanism, it doesn't matter how much of the nucleophile is available. Okay, even the concentration is very high, the rate of the reaction is only being dictated by the concentration of the substrates. So this is basically similar as the rate of reaction for SN1, okay? So we go back, uh, refer to the notes in uh, SN1 and SN2. You notice that the rate of the reaction is similar. E2 is the same as in SN2, while E1 is the same as in SN1. And E2 mechanism happens in a single step, while E1 happens in a two steps. Okay, first, there must be the formation of car carbocation ion, and then only nucleophile can come in and uh, react with the uh, substrates, okay, which is basically similar as well in SN1. So this is the E2 reaction mechanism. Okay, here we have an alkyl halide where the bromine is bonded to this carbon. So this carbon is actually a secondary carbon. Why secondary? It is attached to two other carbon, one and two, okay? So if you cannot uh, visualize it like this, you may draw it in an open skeletal form or in open chain so that it is easier for you to see where is the position of the bromine and carbon and hydrogen. And then we have an ethoxy ion over here, which is considered to be the uh, nucleophile, very strong nucleophile, and it is also a strong base as well. Okay, it's considered to be a base. Okay, so this is toxide ion. It may come from salt, like sodium ethoxide or potassium ethoxide, and you have your substrates. So product form will be an alkene plus alcohol and the uh, bromide ion or the halogen ion. So basically, the mechanism involves a, sing, a, sing, a single step in which you have a transition state of structure. So if you look over here, what will happen? You look at the arrow. The arrow tells you about the movement of the electron. So you have your ethoxide ion. So it moves and straight away trying to form a bond with a hydrogen, okay? One of the hydrogen that is positioned at the beta carbon. So it can be this hydrogen, this hydrogen or this hydrogen, or it can also be the hydrogen from this carbon because they are the same, okay? This is considered to be symmetrical. So you can take any hydrogen from this or from this carbon. Okay, this is symmetrical. If it is not symmetrical, then uh, that will be another, uh, a different way. So 
the uh, halogen, okay, it will start, it will try to remove itself, eliminate itself from this carbon. So the transition state obtained is you have the uh, base, okay, forming a partial bond with the hydrogen and carbon partial bond with the halogen. And the carbon carbon also are forming, starting to form another uh, bond, which is the pi bond. Okay. And next step will be this ethoxide ion and the hydrogen will be completely removed. So the carbon hydrogen bond will be broken, completely broken. Hence, you only are going to end up with two hydrogen on this carbon. While the bromine also, or the bromide, the bromine will be leaving as well this carbon. Okay, the bond over here will be broken. Hence, it will become bromide, which is this one. Okay, in which it receives one electron to fulfill its, uh, its octet configuration. Okay, there is, uh, the, sorry, there are eight. Uh, electrons on the outer shell or in the valence shell. So what happened next is uh, between the carbon, okay, another bond will be formed, which is the double bond. All right, so if you look, uh, if you compare between uh, elimination and substitution mechanism, the difference is basically where does your nucleophile or the base do uh, the attack. Okay, in uh, substitution reaction, this nucleophile or this base will come and attack directly at the alpha carbon. Okay, the carbon that is bonded to the halogen. So it may come from the back. So hence, backside attack. But in elimination reaction, it will form a bond with the hydrogen. It will take one of the hydrogen away. All right, so that is uh, one of the main difference between an elimination uh, mechanism and also the substitution mechanism, particularly for E2. So another important feature for E2 reaction mechanism is that uh, the elements of HX, okay, the uh, eliminated group, a group or group of atoms that is going to be removed must be in the anti periplanar position. So what is this anti periplanar position? Okay, so the H and X group must be anti to each other and be in the same plane with each other and the carbon atoms to which they are attached. So basically, uh, this is a Sawhorse projection the H and X must be pointed uh, towards different direction. So if one is, point, is pointing up, the other one must be pointing downwards. If both are pointing at the same direction, let's say up as well, then it cannot proceed via the E2 mechanism. It will proceed via E1 mechanism, okay? So if you see a compound of alkyl halide, you have to uh, make sure the hydrogen and the halogen that, that is going to be removed is in the anti periplanar position or uh, in anti position, okay? Meaning they are not pointing towards the same direction. So, next mechanism will be on E1, okay? So, E1 is a uh, two steps mechanism okay the first steps will be the formation of carbocation so this is the same like in sn1 um, reaction in which that your substrates or your alkyl halide will start to form the carbocation first then only the nucleophile or the base can come in and react with the carbocation ion. So this reaction is aided by the polar solvent. So the chlorine will depart with the electron pair that is bonded to the carbon. So chlorine will take one of the electrons 
okay, between these two carbon, thus it will become chloride ion. That, okay, so it will leave. So this slow step produces the relatively stable tertiary carbocation. So if you look, the starting material is tertiary and tertiary substrates normally prefer SN1 if you still remember. And it also still prefer uh, E1 mechanism because the intermediate form uh, is a tertiary carbocation, which is a very uh, stable form of carbocation instead of secondary or primary. So the ions are solvated and are being stabilized by surrounding water molecules. So here you have H2O as well. Then the water molecules will only do its jobs when the carbocation is already formed. So the water will remove one of the hydrogen from the beta carbon. So beta carbon <coughs> is the carbon that is attached uh, adjacently to the alpha carbon. So here is your alpha carbon. This is beta carbon. But at the same time, this is also considered to be beta carbon. This one is also beta carbon because it is directly bonded to the alpha carbon. But for this process, you are only actually removing just one hydrogen. So you may select this hydrogen, this hydrogen, or this hydrogen, or in fact, any of the hydrogen from uh, this CH3 or CH3 as well. Okay. So an electron pair moves in to form a double bond between the alpha and beta carbon. So basically, uh, this water or the base will come and take the hydrogen. And this carbon will have an extra electron. Okay, so that means it will become C negative while this carbon is C positive. So this carbon now shares that electron with this carbon. Hence, you will obtain a C double bond C. Okay, and this is the byproduct in which that one of the hydrogen has already been, have been uh, taken away and the chloride ion as well. So alcohols also uh, undergo dehydration reaction, okay, by 1-2 elimination or beta elimination via E1 mechanism, but they eliminate HOH, which is basically water, H2O, okay? Unlike alkyl halide, alkyl halide will remove H, uh, X, but in alcohol, if you did the elimination reaction, uh, the eliminated group of atom will be HOH or H2O. When it is treated with nucleophile, okay, and the product is still the same, an alkene. If you look over here, the OH group of an alcohol cannot leave as OH. So it may not be leaving as an OH group. It will need to be protonate first. It will protonate to form the OH2 plus group, which is a good leaving group in elimination reactions, as well as in uh, the nucleophilic substitution reaction. So OH is a poor leaving group. So you have to protonate. So the word protonate is basically giving a proton. So hydrogen H plus is, is, is considered to be a proton. So once it become a living group, then only uh, the OH2 plus can be uh, removed. So the best acid for dehydration reactions of alcohol are sulfuric acid, H2SO4, or phosphoric acid, which is H3PO4. So why do we need acid? So that acid is basically what is going to supply the H+. Okay, you need this acid to protonate the OH group. So other mineral acid like uh, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, and uh, hydrogen iodide will give substitution products like iodoalkanes, bromoalkanes, or chloroalkanes rather than alkenes because the iodide, bromide, and chloride ions form after the alcohol is protonated are very nucleophilic, okay? And they will react with the uh, living group of ROH. So this is the general uh, mechanism or reaction, sorry, uh, the general reaction pathway, 
Okay, it can be any uh, alcohol, but what you need is basically an acid and also heat. Okay, H plus and also heat. And I'm going to skip up to straight away to this one. Okay, which is uh, the aspects of uh, E1 and E2 reactions. So the distinction between E1 and E2 mechanism is not as clear okay, between SN1 and SN2, meaning that uh, how do you determine whether the reaction proceeds via E1 and E2? So sometimes uh, it is not uh, easily being distinguished unlike SN1 and SN2. For example, like tertiary and secondary alkyl halide will eliminate HX via both E1 and E2 mechanism. So you cannot just see and decide the reaction mechanism based on one factors. Okay, if you still remember, there are four factors on how to decide which mechanism for SN1 or SN2. Okay, and then for primary alkyl halide, it will only eliminate uh, the hydrogen halide HX via the E2 mechanisms only. Okay, kalau uh, you are the primary alkyl halide, okay, it will only proceed via E2. Okay, not uh, E1 mechanism. But for both E1 and E2 mechanism, the rate follow the trend as follows, meaning that uh, here you have tertiary alkyl halide and then you have secondary and primary alkyl halide. Okay, but primary alkyl halide does not react uh, via E1. Okay, it will only proceed via E2 mechanisms only. So here, uh, example. So for many alkyl halides, there are two possible elimination products. Okay, uh, the earlier example shows only one type of product because that is uh, the substrates uh use uh quite as have quite have a very simple structures okay here an example if the reaction proceeds via e1 mechanism uh we have a tertiary alkyl halide over here so the tertiary alkyl halide below has three beta carbons two are identical metal groups and the third is a methylene ch2 group so let's see which carbon is uh, directly bonded to the halogen which is bromine so this carbon over here is bonded to the bromine so this is considered as the alpha carbon okay carbon that is bonded to the functional group is considered to be the alpha carbon then all other carbon that is adjacent to it okay the neighbors that is bonded to the alpha carbon is considered as the beta carbon so this is beta carbon, this is beta carbon, this one is also beta carbon. But this is not beta carbon as it is not directly bonded to the alpha carbon. Okay, then if you look at these two carbon, they are basically considered as the same type of carbon because it is located at the terminal. Let's say if I started counting, you still remember the uh, how to name a compound, you have to check the longest alkyl chain. So let's say if I start numbering from this carbon, then it will be 1, 2, 3, 4. But if I also start numbering from this carbon, it will still be 1, 2, 3, 4. Still the same. So these two are considered to be in the same uh, environment or identical. Okay, so uh, you may choose to uh, extract the hydrogen okay, from the base or the nucleophile, this hydrogen, this hydrogen, this hydrogen or uh, these three hydrogen, they are still considered to be the same. But this beta carbon is uh, having a different types of environment. So these are primary, this is also primary, but this beta carbon is secondary, it is bonded to two other carbon this is a CH2 group, this is CH3, okay? So that means you have two options over here. You want to take the hydrogen from this carbon or from this carbon. 
So that is why there will be a two types of product form. Okay, first step over here, this is an E1 mechanism. A carbocation will be formed. Okay, bromide, uh, bromine will be leaving as bromide. Okay, so this is this step is very slow. This is considered to be the rate determining step. So you have C plus, which is the carbocation. So once you have the carbocation, the base or the nucleophile can comes in and take one of the hydrogen. That hydrogen is basically the beta hydrogen. So from which hydrogen that you want to take, it may take from this or this. Okay, these two are identical, basically the same. So there are two choices. If it remove hydrogen from this beta carbon, then the double bond will be formed between these two carbon, C, C over here. Okay, you are going to end up with this product. But if the uh, hydrogen that is removed is from this carbon, okay, this carbon, then the double bond that will be formed, okay, in the product is between these two carbon. Okay, then you are going to end up uh, with this kind of product. And then these two products have their own name, okay, not uh, IUPAC name. IUPAC name is different. This is considered to be what kind of product it is. So one is known as SETZEF and the other one is known as a Hoffman product. So SETZEF is basically uh, the product with more substituted alkene. Okay, it makes the product more stable. Okay, basically uh, uh, the C, C bond over here, C double bond C. Okay, so more substituted alkene uh, at this carbon. Okay, it is bonded to other than hydrogen. So on this carbon, it is bonded to CH3. Then on this carbon, it is bonded to CH3. But for this carbon, it is bonded to one hydrogen and another is CH3. So we can say that uh, on this uh, carbon, carbon-carbon uh, double bond, it has three substituents. Okay, one, two, and three. Thus making it more stable. But for this product, in which that the double bond form here, it is considered to be less substituted because on this carbon, it is bonded to two hydrogen, one hydrogen, one hydrogen. Only on this side of the carbon, carbon double bond, it is bonded to other carbon, which is this is methyl group, and the other one is an ethyl group, CH2, CH3. So this has three substituents, and this one is two substituents, okay, making it less substituted alkene, thus less stable. And these are known as Hoffman product while the more substituted alkene will be known as SETZEF. <clears throat> so here, the uh, secondary alkyl halide shown uh, below has two beta carbon which are not uh, identical. Okay, one group is the, uh, I think this is the same. Mm. Sorry. Sorry, this is v, not via E1, V2. Okay, eh, sorry, E2 mechanism. So, on this example as well, you have two uh, different uh, beta carbon. So, this is one beta carbon in which you have CH3 bonded to this carbon that is uh, directly bonded to the bromine. And this is another type of uh, beta carbon as well with hydrogen. So if it proceeds via E2 mechanism, then it will be a single step. Still, there are two uh, options, okay, of hydrogen that you may uh, take away in which that the first one, the base may uh, take away this hydrogen, okay, it may remove this hydrogen, okay, which is the CH2, uh, the secondary carbon, uh, secondary beta carbon. So the double for, double bond form will be uh, between these two carbon. Okay. And then uh, another option of hydrogen to be removed 
is the terminal uh, beta carbon, okay, in which that the double bond form will be between these two carbon. So you are going to end up with two types of product of alkene and you have to determine which one is this itself is by checking the number of substitution bonded to the C double bond C. So for this one, there are two, CH3, another one is also CH3. Okay, remember hydrogen is not considered as a substituent. But for this one, okay, the product is only having one uh, other ethyl group, which is bonded directly to this carbon, while the rest are all hydrogen. So this has is considered to having only one substituent. Okay, so thus it will it is less substituted, less stable, hence the name is called as the Hoffman product. So <clears throat> Hoffman versus Zef product. So the proportion of the less substituted alkene Hoffman product, it can be increased by the use of very bulky base. So basically, if you still want to get Hoffman as the uh, major product, okay, for example, like this. So ZF, uh, the more substituted alkene, more, uh, more stable, will be the major product. So that means you are going to produce a lot more of this compared to this. Let's say the product of ZF could be 80% while Hoffman only 20%. But what if you still want to get uh, Hoffman product as the major product, meaning you want to have this in 80% of the yield while this one only 20%. So you can do that by using a bulky base. So just now the base that is in this reaction is just a hydroxide ion. So this is not considered bulky because you have one oxygen, one hydrogen ion. But in this example, there are two examples of bulky base. One is a third butoxide, okay, which is come from potassium butoxide. So the letter T, which is third, is basically comes from tertiary. Okay, this carbon is a tertiary carbon. One, two, three. Okay, but but because there are four carbons, which is butane. Okay, the root word but four carbon, and being uh, uh, an alkoxy group, so when it becomes substituents like this, so this is uh, uh, an alkoxide, so hence third butoxide. So another example is even bulkier than that, instead of a methyl group when bonded to this carbon, it is an ethyl group. So it is a 3-ethyl, 3-pentoxide. Okay, 3-ethyl, uh, 3 uh, pentoxide. So this is even bulkier than uh, this one. So how uh, the mechanism works by having this uh, bulky base, it will change the amount of Hoffman and ZF product form. So bulky base increases the proportion of, of the less substituted alkene, which is the Hoffman product form elimination. So here an example, if you are using the uh, bulkier base instead of let's say like a hydroxide ion, the Hoffman product increases to 97% while uh, ZF product is only 3%. Okay, the H, uh, the hydrogen on the less substituted beta carbon, let's say uh, this one, uh, less substituted beta carbon, uh, no, this one, okay, are uh, more sterically accessible, meaning that this is the structure is very big. Okay, the structure is very big. So it is easier to take away hydrogen or remove hydrogen from this carbon, this beta carbon, instead of let's say from this beta carbon which is here. So it has to really be at an angle. Okay, uh, it has to put itself in a very specific. Uh, orientation in order to remove this hydrogen. But if you are going to remove hydrogen from any of this carbon, okay, the uh, base over here can come in from any side, any angle, as long as it is at the end, 
and remove one of the hydrogen away. So this hydrogen, this particular hydrogen are considered to be as sterically hindered. Okay, sterically hindered. Well, this one is more sterically accessible. So when the base is very bulky, the hydrogen on the less substituted beta carbon are almost exclusively removed. And the less substituted Hoffman, which is the alkene product, predominates. So how? Basically, it's like this. Okay. So you have a very uh, big structures of base. For example, like just now, third butoxide. So if it wants to come and remove this hydrogen, it will be very hard because it is considered to be crowded. You have a bromine over here. You have another CH3 over here. But if it wants to remove the hydrogen from the last carbon, which is this one, okay, another beta carbon, it is very easily accessible. Okay, you can go in from any angle. So this is on uh, Regio Chemistry and Serial Chemistry. Uh, I have explained earlier, but you can read later. So substitution uh, versus elimination. So how do you uh, determine whether a reaction can proceed via elimination or substitution reaction? Because the product will uh, be different in substitution. You are just going to substitute that halide or halogen group with any other nuclear file that is being added. But for elimination, product form will exclusively be an alkene. So it is easier uh, to create condition which favor elimination reactions or E2 mechanism over SN2 mechanism. So in E2 mechanism, uh, you basically need a very strong base. Okay, a strong base is also uh, a strong nucleophile. So example, ethoxide. Uh, instead of using hydroxide. So if you use ethoxide ion, okay, which is uh, CH3CH2O minus, so that will definitely make the reaction proceeds via E2. And then if you are using relatively non-polar solvent, okay, which is like ethanol instead of water or DMF or DMSO, then it may proceed via E2. And uh, another uh, condition which is involving high temperature because earlier in the slides I mentioned that elimination reaction favors a uh, harsher condition in which that you need to add base and you need high temperature so high temperature will favor E2 reaction mechanism over a substitution which is SN2 so how to predict uh, reaction mechanism so first, uh, non-basic or good nucleophiles, okay. So non-basic nucle good nucleophiles like bromide and iodide, okay, these are very strong nucleophiles, but it's not a base, okay, will cause substitution reaction, not elimination, okay. Uh, in tertiary substrates, which is tertiary alkyl halide, only SN1 is possible, okay, in only SN1 is possible. In a uh, metal group, okay, or primary uh, substrates, SN2 will be faster. But for secondary substrates, the mechanism of substitution depends upon the solvent itself. But if you are using strong bases, okay, like uh, hydroxy group or OR minus, so this is alkoxy, okay, like methoxide, alkox uh, ethoxide, and so on, they are still considered to be. Uh, nucleophile but instead of being a uh, neutral nucleophile like uh, bromide and iodide it is also a very strong base so uh, substitution and elimination will compete but then again uh, the reaction will mostly favors elimination reactions okay so in tertiary and secondary alkyl halide uh, e2 will be faster but in primary and uh, methyl uh, alkyl halide, okay, just one carbon, this one, 
uh, uh, SN2 uh, reaction will occur. Oh, sorry. Uh, if weak basic and weak nucleophiles are used, like water, ethanol, uh, ethanoic acid, duocytic acid, uh, they cannot react unless a carbocation is formed. So that means uh, the substrates or the alkyl halide must form a carbocation first. The living group must leave. Okay, the halogen must leave first. Okay, this will only occur for secondary or tertiary substrates. Okay, once the carbocation forms, SN1 and E1 uh, will compete as well. Okay, the sub substitution product is usually predominant. Okay, normally it will favor uh, SN1 reaction instead of uh, E1. So high temperature will increase yield of elimination product over substitution. So if you look in the reaction scheme, there is a uh, temperature above. So the keyword of high temperature, it means temperature above room temperature. Room temperature is around 25, 27 degrees Celsius. If it is more than that, okay, like 40 or 60 or 70, so it's most definitely will follow elimination reaction. And another symbol that is being used to denote high temperature is a small triangle uh, under the uh, arrow of the reaction. And then for polar, so polar solvents, both protic and aprotic, like water and uh, cyanomethane uh, over here, respectively, will favor unimolecular reactions in which SN1 and E1, okay, because uh, it will try to stabilize the uh, carbocation ion that is formed, okay, which is on the first step. Well, polar a protic solvent will uh, enhance biomolecular reaction for SN2 and also E2 uh, mechanism by activating the uh, nucleophile involved. So these are, uh, how to say, uh, summarized version on how can you determine uh the uh, reaction okay will follow which mechanism okay you may use this as a guide as well okay i also included okay a few uh, uh another table over here okay it's basically same info it's just that uh we are having uh, different uh, reaction mechanism okay so you can refer to this or the previous one in order uh, for you to consider which mechanism the reaction will uh, proceed okay so this one also can be used okay another uh, table over here like SN1, SN2, E1 and E2 okay so if SN1 primary halide does not occur, well, for SN2, tertiary halide doesn't occur. So you may refer to this, okay, to determine the uh, reaction mechanism and what types of uh, product, basically, that will be formed. So that is uh, the end of the 